Hi, I'm Joe Hildreth from MyHeap.com. So in this series uh, titled CNC for the Home Hobbyist, I'm uh, attempting to explain some of the things that uh, I've learned over the last several years when building a couple CNC routers for myself. Now please keep in mind that I'm neither a professional or a machinist or, or anything like that, that I'm simply a hobbyist that uh, has you know, I'm trying to uh, pass on some information that some of the other hobbyists out there might find useful. Because CNC can be a pretty overwhelming topic when you try to grapple it all at once. So, welcome to the series. So, the big question here is, what is NC or CNC? NC stands for numer uh, Numerical Control, and it originated in the 40s and 50s. And it came about uh, as a mean of controlling machines in an automated manner. And they've done this in order to pr uh, produce machined items in a faster and more consistent way. In the early days, machines were controlled uh, with a program that was punched onto paper tapes or into cards. Uh, these parts programs were then fed into a tape or a card reader into the controller for processing. As technology advanced, tape readers and early controllers were replaced with more sophisticated computers and other semiconductor circuits uh, reducing both the size and the cost of the systems. It is with these advances we get the term CNC, which stands for Computer Numeric Control. At the heart of these NC and CNC machines lies the controller. The controller can receive input from multiple sources and acts on them in real time. The controller is responsible for locating the position of motors and axes and will drive the motors that need positioning like slides or tooling. The controller is responsible for tracking the position of these motors, projecting the next move of the machine, changing tools, setting the feed rates, reading inputs like switches and limits, both soft and hard, and much more. Understanding the controller will take you a long way to understanding CNC machines, whether they are lathes, milling machines, robots, part placers, 3D printers, hexapods, or and something entirely different. The controller for the new CNC hobbyist can be a confusing thing to wrap the brain around, and I, I think it's best viewed as a bunch of interconnecting black boxes. These boxes have, a divine, uh, have defined sets of inputs and outputs. When these boxes are wired together, you end up with a system that can control and monitor electrical mechanical devices, things like motors and switches. Some controllers offer more manual setup and configuration than other controllers, uh, and can be configured to do many things, while another group of controllers are designed to work within certain parameters that meet most users' needs with the least amount of intervention from the user. The choice of which controller to use is strictly a matter of personal taste and depends on what you wish to do with it. As far as the hobbyist goes, there are three main controllers out there to choose from. The one that you decide uh, to use might be driven by price or function or maybe the underlying operating system or perhaps something else. Uh, there's religious wars about what controller is best and I'm leaving that entirely up to you. But the three main controllers available to use to the hobbyists are Turbo CNC, Mach 3 or Mach 4, and Linux CNC, formerly known as EMC or EMC2. Turbo CNC. This controller was written by DAC Engineering. It is a fully functional shareware with a $60 registration fee. It's a DOS application which will drive a machine with up to eight axes of motion. This is the first controller that I ever used when I got into CNC. I ran this on an old Pentium machine running FreeDOS years ago before switching to EMC2. Mach 3 and Mach 4, uh, this controller is written by Arcs, uh, Artsoft. Mach 3 runs on Microsoft Windows 2000 through Windows 7, 32-bit uh, only, and has a licensing fee of $175. For 64-bit Windows OS's and Windows 8, an external motion device is required uh, as accessing the parallel port and the newer OS's is almost technically not possible. Mach 4, on the other hand, is a rewrite of the software and will run on 32 or 64-bit Windows XP through Windows 10. The preferred usage is with an external motion controller, but it can be used with a parallel port uh, but only on Windows 7 or below and it must be a 32-bit operating system. The Mach 4 hobby license is $200 and the parallel port plug-in if you wish to have it is an additional $25.
Linux CNC, originally called EMC, which stood for the Enhancement uh, Machine Controller, was created by NIST, uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is an agency of the Commerce Department of the United States government. In its early stages, EMC was sponsored by General Motors and was used to control a large milling machine. In 2011, the name was changed from EMC or EMC2 to Linux CNC due to a letter uh, received from the EMC Corporation who had a trademark on the name itself. Linux CNC is free and open source, meaning that you can download it along with all the source code and make any changes that you see fit to the software. Linux CNC follows the Unix paradigm, which very closely, or the, follows the paradigm very closely, and uh, we'll, you know, we'll discuss about that more in another video. Because Linux CNC is designed to run a large variety of equipment and machines, setting up and using it is more involved than any other of the controllers listed above. I've been using this controller for some time, and further discussion on hobby level CNC will center around this controller. In a nutshell, the controller, regardless of which one is selected, is responsible for interacting and coordinating the actions between the operator, the G-code program it is running, and the hardware it's attached to. For example, when a machine is turned on and the operator selects the home axis function from the controller screen, the controller will send the required signals to the motor to start moving the selected axis towards its home position all the while monitoring the switch it expects to encounter indicating that it has reached its physical or machine limits then will move to the axis some predetermined distance at which time the appropriate offsets in the controller variable table etc etc you get the idea over the next several tutorials I would like to discuss in some detail how the Linux CNC controller works how it can be installed and configured how to make changes to it the types of hardware you can use and many other related topics the intent of these tutorials is to give the hobbyists enough information to make the system work for their needs. It's going, is it going by hard work? <laughs> you bet. Um, but you know what? The rewards are many. So stay tuned and uh, look for more of these tutorials and hopefully we'll get there. So in the meantime, thank you for watching and um, like my other videos, if they've helped you or you think they'll help someone else, please like, subscribe, and share. And other than that, have a blessed day.